Um, so welcome everyone. I'll tell you our theme in just a moment. I just wanna go through props. We're gonna start in a chair. We actually need to be in a chair rather than on the floor because we, it's much easier to be on the floor uh, on, in a chair for a period of time while we're working with jaw, head and neck and even rib cage and working with, in, this, in this upright relationship to gravity. You will need pillows when we do, go to supine and we do our breathing exercise today. I am gonna to try to do some kind of breathing activity, um, maybe in every class, but in many classes. And you will either need to bend your knees during the breathing activity, or I suggest rolling a blanket or having a bolster for under your knees. And you also will need to elevate your head. Even if you feel you're very good lying out with your head, you'll wanna elevate it at least about close to an inch. So you'll need some kind of folded towel or some kind of uh, fairly narrow pillow to lie on for under your head. You'll probably want to take your shoes off towards the end if they're not off already. I like to, I wear my slippers to class <laughs> and then I take them off when we're going to do a standing and moving activity, rib cage uh, uh, and, um, and pelvis activity at the end of class in standing and then we'll walk. Okay, so let me go to the first slide because our theme is uh, easy and complicated at the same time. Our theme is about interrelationships and self-regulation. So uh, for the sake of the tape, I just wanna say um, we are now doing somatic movement and anatomy, the 2021 class series. And today is Saturday, December 4th, 2021. And today is about end of year requests and more. Um, and uh, a number of people had uh, requested some jaw work. So when I started thinking about jaw work, I realized, well, jaw work is so interrelated, has so many interrelationships uh, with the vagus nerve, with head neck position, with rib cage to thoracic spine position, and I'll talk about that when I have a slide on it, uh, even breathing. And um, then it also interrelates with uh, our neuro, many, many important neurovascular connections. Neuro is nerves and vascular are arteries and veins. So we are going to definitely include, which I don't think I've ever really done very much, uh, include neurovascular connections today as we work. And of course, all of that relates to how we use our mus muscles and our myo, myo, which is muscle, fascial, skeletal system. So we are going to cover a lot of ground and it hopefully will, you'll feel improvement in jaw, in head and neck, in rib cage, and in full body interrelationships in movement and contralateral movement. Uh, the interrelationship of all our systems has everything to do with the self-regulation of our autonomic nervous system, ANS, autonomic nervous system, in combination with the self-regulation of our myofascial skeletal system. Let's remember to think of ourself as an integrated, coordinated whole soma. So in thinking about jaw led me to head and neck, led me to rib cage and thoracic spine. All of that has to do with the autonomic nervous system quite a lot. And then as I was thinking about it, looking at anatomy pictures, um, even doing a little reading, uh, it, I kept realizing how important our neurovascular system, nerves, arteries, and veins were to everything we were talking about. So I, I like to kind of do a survey in the, this is the second slide, but when we are talking about jaw, we are not just talking about muscles, but we're talking about the arterial and nerve connections up into the jaw. We're also talking about all the muscles and all the muscles of the jaw, all the muscles of the jaw are interconnected with facial muscles, with head neck muscles and rib cage muscles as well. And then this is just a general diagram of some of the large nerve trunks in the body. They go everywhere. Not I'm not screen sharing. Oh my goodness. 
uh, what happened to my screen share? Oh, okay, hold on. I'm not screen sharing. That's not a good thing. That's what has to happen. Um, sorry. Uh, so my, the, all our interrelationships. So uh, now I'm going to, come, going to come back. So when we think about the jaw area, it's completely interconnected, not just with all the muscles of the jaw, but with all the blood supply and nerve conduction into the jaw. And all the muscles of the jaw relate to the muscles of the whole face, like the eyes, the cheeks, the nose, into the ears, into the scalp, into the head and neck, into the thorax, the rib cage. And then it also has to do with nerve supply. We can't work our muscles if we don't have good nerve conduction. So we have nerves everywhere. So everything we do today, I'm gonna to try to remind you that we're not just working with muscles, but we're working with the vascular system, arteries in red, veins in blue, and major nerves, and um, how we use our jaw and our head and neck is very tied in with the regulation, the self, our self-regulation with the autonomic nervous system. And sometimes people forget that the rib cage with the sternum in the front and the thoracic spine in the back the whole thoracic spine is important to the autonomic nervous system. The uh, sternum or breastbone is like the spine in the front of the body and the nerves go completely around from sternum to transverse process of the thoracic spine. So we have a lot of interconnection and self-regulation that relates to each other. Just to remind you, the autonomic nervous system is the part of the nervous system responsible for the control of bodily functions that are not consciously directed, such as breathing, the heartbeat, and digestive processes. Uh, we are always in some background state of the autonomic nervous system. The cortical conscious part of us and the subcortical unconscious part of us are always in communication and interacting and influencing, other, influencing each other to self-regulate our soma. Now we can control breathing if we focus on it. As soon as we don't focus on it though, we are gonna to continue to breathe. So we have some conscious control over some of our more unconscious, usually unconscious processes, but only if we pay attention. And we learned in our last class more about the autonomic nervous system, and now it's five divisions, ventral vagal, which is part of the, paras the old paradigm of the parasympathetic system, bonding and sociality, deep intuition, you know, those gut feelings you have, especially when they're strong, that has to do with deep intuition. And that is available to you when you're in ventral vagal, when you are in the part of the parasympathetic model that is ventral vagal. Ventral vagal is calming, it's about rest, digest, breathing, heart lung, heart lung health and circulation. Dorsal vagal, which is also part of the vagus nerve system, is the new part discovered or elucidated by Stephen Porges. And dorsal vagal, when you are deep into negative dorsal vagal, you are into freeze, despair and immobility. There is positive dorsal, which slows our system for better digestion and other function. The spinal sympathetic chain, the old sympathetic nervous system, now usually referred to as spinal sympathetic chain, is associated with stress, anxiety. It shuts off our ability to be social, have clear thinking and access deep intuition. Positive, ac positive aspects of the sympathetic chain, activate excitement, enthusiasm, exuberance, active productive activities, combinations of the three main states, ventral vagal, dorsal vagal, and sympathetic, spinal sympathetic chain, allow us to engage in uh, 
in, in intimacy, sex, competitive sports, excitement about ideas and activities. So it's very interesting that we now have five states. And as we work with vagus nerve activities today and reset vagus nerve, resetting the vagus nerve is often resetting the breathing, is often normalizing and bringing all these vagal nerve and old parasympathetic functions into appropriate balance and appropriate balance between old model sympathetic parasympathetic systems. So this all came out of thinking about the request for jaw work and head and neck work. So in green, we have the mandible, the lower part of the jaw, that's the part of the jaw that is movable. And this is the temporal mandibular joint. We all have one, TMJ. Many people have lots of inflammation and muscle imbalance and fascial imbalance in the TMJ joint and have a lot of problems. Um, just different views. Here's the mandible again, the lower jaw. When we think of our cranium, the cranium can be divided into the neural cranium that houses our brain and the visceral cranium that houses the lo this lower aspect that includes the jaw. And it's part of the sphenoid bone and the temporal mandibular joint and gums and teeth and tongue. It involves a whole lot. Uh, a couple of the muscles of the jaw we're definitely going to be dealing with today are the temporalis muscle. It works with the masseter muscle to close the jaw. One of the main problems with our with jaw uh, is uh, clenching of the teeth. And we do it with stress and anxiety, and it's become so habitual in people, they don't even know that they're clenching their jaw. And the function of the jaw has everything to do and is interrelated with facial muscles. These are the circular muscles, sphincter muscles around the mouth and lips, around the eyes, and all this musculature interrelates. So the condition of our jaw could very much relate to eye tension or eye health, jaw health or tension and vice versa, and even into our hearing and even into our forehead and scalp muscles, which then completely combined with muscles like the upper trapezius, which are not shown here. So again, the jaw area is a very complicated, complex part of our anatomy. The jaw area and jaw health ties in with tongue health. Tongue is a great big muscle or combination of muscles. And it ties in with our whole throat, so our muscles surrounding our neck surround the whole throat. They surround the cervical spine. They surround vocal cords, the esophagus, the food tube, tube which is behind the wind tube, the trachea. And all of this combination of musculature actually hangs from it's not shown as clearly here, here it is. It hangs from the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So between the temporal mandibular joint tying into uh, the um, temporal bone, this process of the temporal bone, the whole frontal mechanism hangs from that process. We have a lot of muscles we don't even think about. Well, we, the tongue is a muscle, but we have different palates and different um, arching muscles, here's the uvula, all very important in the ability to use our jaw, head and neck comfortably. So <clears throat> here's the hyoid bone. It's the bone underneath, you can put your uh, thumb and index finger if you reach underneath your throat and you can kind of wiggle it back and forth. And this is just, there's many muscles. This is just part of like the digastric muscle, but this musculature, so here's our famous sternocleidomastoid muscle, SCM, part of the head, neck, very complex muscles. The, and we're gonna see, but the carotid artery, which is blood to the brain and to the jaw, the big, big veins, jugular, jugular vein and large nerve trunks, including the vagus nerve, all come under the sternocleidomastoid and are all wrapped together in fascia. So 
the fascia is connective tissue that wraps everything and transmits the force of using our muscles through everything. So it looks like these, this is separate, this is separate, this is separate, not true. This is all connected through the fascial web. And here's the scalene muscles, and here's the brachial plexus, big nerve plexus that comes through it, big arteries off the nerve, uh, the big veins um, come. So we have big neurovascular bundles under the sternocleidomastoid and big nerve trunks, the brachial plexus that come through the scalenes, and they go under the pec minor. So the clavicle is cut, and, and, and here's pec minor, and this whole neurovascular bundle goes under the pec minor. So when we have a forward head, and we slump in our chair at the computer, we are compromising jaw, head and neck, all these neurovascular trunks and our rib cage, therefore our breathing and because our rib cage is connected to our thoracic spine and the thoracic spine, which connects with all other parts of the spine, we are intimately connected. So here's the jugular vein, uh, artery, sorry, I'm sorry. This is um, not the jugular, the carotid artery arteries in red. So here we are, we're basically under the sternocleidomastoid, the big aorta coming off the heart and it branches into very large arteries. And one of the arteries it branches into is the carotid artery, which splits this part of the carotid artery, goes and feeds the brain. And this, part, this uh, anterior split feeds the jaw. So the health of our neck and sternocleidomastoid and relationship of the head to all the neck muscles to the rib cage muscles is very important to brain health, to jaw health, to health of the uh, neck. And then we have, so here's our cervical spine and this is the vertebral artery. I'm going to show it over here again. This is our cervical spine from an anterior view, cervical C1, C2, C3, et cetera, from the, an anterior view. And you can see the cervical spine, here it is again. This is just showing uh, the vertebral artery, but artery, vein, and nerve often work as a neurovascular bundle. The main trunks work together like um, lanes on a freeway. and um, there are little foramina or holes in the transverse processes of every cervical vertebrae. I'm not sure about C1, but maybe C1, but all the way down. And um, the vertebral artery and the carotid artery, that is the blood supply to our brain, period. We have, veno, we have venous supply, which takes the deoxygenated blood back into the heart lung complex, but fresh blood is vertebral artery, carotid artery, health of head, neck, jaw, rib cage, and more, because we're such a connected whole. So again, back to this is the cervical spine. You, have, you can see how these neurovascular bundles, nerves, arteries and veins travel together like lanes on a freeway. And sometimes you have to change lanes because they can cross each other. So this is very important. So we're going to work carefully. We're going to sl work slowly. We're going to, we're, we're working with a lot of things, not just muscles. I just want to uh, also um, show you that right behind the sternum, a little to the left, we have our heart. And then uh, this is, we have lots of vascular uh, connection into our lungs. Uh, here's the aortic arch and it branches carotid going up, jugular coming down. We have these large trunks. Here's the um, lower part of the aorta. And um, so when we're working with our, our uh, breathing and when we're working with intercostal muscles between the ribs and other large overlying pectoral muscles, pec major, pec minor, obliques, rectus abdominis, transverse abdominis, all connected into the rib cage in various ways. We are not just working with breathing, we are working with heart function and circulation function. This is a picture from Body Worlds 
If you melted away every kind of tissue except vascular tissue in the head, this is what your vascular system in your head looks like. It is incredible. Blood reaches everywhere. It's part of everything we do. And we could just color this same picture yellow and that and melt all the tissues away except nerves. And it would look like this except yellow. And it, that would be the nerve connections going up into the head, the brain, the jaw, the eyes, the ears, et cetera. And again, I wanted to just come back to this brachial plexus coming down underneath the pec minor feeding the arms. Here you get to really see these freeway lanes and these channels and how this sort of basket weave changes lanes in various ways. So we, we are really working with an important part of our anatomy when we are doing what we're going to be doing today. Here's the vagus nerve uh, right under the SEM, the large trunk, upper, upper vagus nerve going to the brain and parts of the face. The vagus nerve goes to all our viscera. It goes to the heart and the lungs, and it's under the sternocleidomastoid. And it's a, the vagus nerve is a very important part of resetting, self-regulating the autonomic nervous system and ventral vagus. We're gonna get to the smile part in our breathing activity. And uh, I've written the breathing activity down. Later on, I'll reflash this you can take a picture of it if you want, and later I'll flash it again so you can take a picture of it. And just, you know, we're going to do full body, full torso breathing, not just in the belly, but in the rib area, three-dimensional full torso breathing. So um, that may have been a long introduction, but I want to give you some new kinds of movements and ways of thinking about the movements we're going to do today. So I'm going to come out of... Um, the sharing. And we're going to go to uh, our first activity. So because we're going to start in a chair, we want to sit up. So, you know, sit, sit in your chair so you're comfortable. You want your feet on the floor. Feel how much of your feet, if you're really sitting well, you want to be in a chair or a stool that you really feel your feet on the floor. Maybe you can feel your toe pads on the floor as well, but don't scrunch your toes to do it, just relax. Your neck is long. You do not want to pull your head back. Pulling the head back, it's part of forward head. We are contracting and constricting all the blood that's going to the jaw, to the brain, because we're constricting carotid artery and intervertebral artery. We're constricting vagus nerve. So this forward head from slump, slumping is really, and I'm talking to myself here as well, we really want to not have that habit. We want a long neck. You can put your hand behind your head at the juncture of the top of your neck and just put it there and go into a forward head and feel how contracted those muscles get. If the muscles are contracting all the neurovascular bundles associated with that position are also compressing. And all the fascial connections, if it's a chronic habit, are over time that fascia just acts like hard, almost like hard cement to keep us there. So we really need to on a many times a day level, check that the back of our neck is long and I need to do this too because I have the habit of pulling my head, the back of my head back and the chin part forward. And I need to break myself of that habit just like I would say 99% of us do. So you wanna feel your sits bones, you wanna sit comfortably, long spine, long front, long back, Arms relax, check your arms. Are you holding your shoulders up just unconsciously? Can you just let them relax? Are you holding in your legs? You're sitting in a chair. You don't have to hold muscles in your legs, but so many of us are so on alert all the time and much more in our parasympathetic or combinations of parasympathetic that we're holding. We're holding ourselves up and in and we wanna just be able to undo that. Okay. So 
What's really important as we do these various tests that we're going to go through today is we're going to once in a while go back and forth between nice upright sitting and slump position. So let's just start with some neck tests. This is you're going to track your own self and we're going to use a lot of rotation. So turning the head, briefly coming back to center. We're not pendiculating, we're testing to see which is our easy direction, which is our not as easy direction. And we're heightening our interoceptive skills, our sensing skills. So don't go so fast that you just whip yourself over and you cannot feel your tension barriers. So if you go slowly, I can feel right there, I'm beginning to feel a bit of a tension barrier. It doesn't feel that bad, but I notice it. But now right there, I know that's where I wanna stop or I'm really gonna to have to go into a lot of tension. So we wanna hone interoceptive skills, especially when we're thinking about neurovascular bundles because our intention helps our brain go to those systems and those systems are more delicate in general than our muscles. And then we're gonna go in the other direction. I went a little fast and there, there. I, right there for me, I can feel a kind of mild barrier. I'm gonna go a little, there's my, barrier barrier. I know if I go faster, I'm really doing some forcing. So you have to track yourself. You have to notice, is it easier for you to go to the right? This is my right. It'll feel opposite to you. This is my left. Right now, it's my left is a little bit more, not as easy for me. You decide where it is for you. And we want to do side bending. Just gentle side bending side bending. And I come to barriers pretty quickly. Now, just for reference, go into slump, hollow your, hollow your uh, sternum, your breastbone, narrow your chest, round your shoulders, stick your head forward, and now turn your head right and left. Can you feel how it just, everything is not as good? And what about side to side movement? Not as good. Come back up to sitting and let that go. It's very important. These are interrelated systems. Another thing I like to do with the neck periodically is roll it down. Bring your chin down and then roll down through your cervical spine into your thoracic spine. And I feel barriers in a number of places. This is just me as I roll down. I drop my chin first and then I bring my forehead down. I feel upper cervical tension and I feel tension and lower cervical spine and where it meets my thoracic spine. I feel quite a bit of tension in those two places. You'll feel it where you feel it. You have to track yourself. Let's just come into good sitting and let's just go to our jaw for a moment and do some jaw tests. Everything is so interrelated, long neck, sitting on your sits bones and just gently open your jaw. I'm reaching a barrier there. I can go a little past it, but that's really where I wanna stop or I'm forcing. And now I might wanna even open my mouth a little bit and go side to side. Okay, now slump head forward, chin forward, back of head back. All right, open your mouth. There's my barrier. Side to side. I can't even go to the left hardly. So back to good sitting. So right there, we are self-regulating ourselves just by sitting in a, in a better posture. Doesn't mean we can't turn our head and use our head, but nice long spine, nice long neck, not the forward head, not the slumping. So right there, we've, that's already a big, big habits to get out of because it'll affect everything, including the breathing. Okay. Um, let's go to our very first. So in a way, that's a movement, correcting your sitting, correcting your standing so that you have a a central axis then from which you move all over. That is a movement. It's maybe the most important movement to practice and do in your whole life because everything else will feed off of it to the negative or to the positive. 
Okay, so we're going to start with the sternocleidomastoid. And the sternocleidomastoid, so here's my right, here's my right, it may look left to you, we're going to always do both sides. But your sternocleidomastoid does two major movements. It rotates you to the opposite side. Can you see how that sticks out? So this is my short side. This is actually my contracted side. This left side is my long side. People go, I don't believe it. So here's the test. Go with whichever one you're on. So the sternocleidomastoid comes down into the top of the breastbone and the medial part of the clavicle. You can just put a finger there and it goes into right behind your ear. You have the mastoid process. And when you turn your head to the opposite side, my two fingers are coming closer together. N neutral, they're farther apart. I turn my head, they're closer together. That muscle is shortening. Now I am going to, I wanna show that this is shortening and the le left is lengthening. I'm going to go to the sternocleidomastoid on the left, right at the medial clavicle and the, the mastoid process. And now when I contract my right sternocleidomastoid by turning to the left, my fingers go farther away from each other. That muscle is lengthening. That is the lengthening direction. That's a really good one to do with your clients because intuitively it, it, it's confusing. Okay, and the sternocleidomastoid side bends. It turns to the opposite side, it side bends to the same side. Under the sternocleidomastoid, we have vagus nerve, carotid artery, jugular vein, and along the scalene muscles, which is also a side bender, along with the sternocleidomastoid, we have the cervical plexus coming out. Okay, so we are going to do a move for um, the health of our neck uh, focused on the sternocleidomastoid. You know, hanosomatic education and many disciplines have many neck movements. I'm gonna focus on sternocleidomastoid today because of time and because of the neurovascular bundle so associated with it. So I have to prepare you a little bit. We're going to uh, we're going to hug. We're going to come to the upper part of our rib cage. So here are my clavicles. I might need to take my sweater off. Uh, your clavicles are your collarbones. <clears throat> here are your clavicles. The first space is usually between rib one and rib two. Rib one usually curves so close under the clavicle, you often can't feel that space. Sometimes if you're really tall, you'll feel that space. If Ken Bridgman or Ryan are here today, they may be able to feel the first rib space. But the, the first rib space we tend to feel is between rib one and rib two. Then we come to a rib, and then here's the space between rib two and rib three. We feel a rib, rib three and four, et cetera. We're gonna just generally hug one hand over the other, just gently place in this general area. It doesn't matter if you're covering ribs two, three, and four, or three, four, and five, you're just in this area. And with a nice long neck, sitting well, we, part of this move is going to be to add just a little bit of compression in toward, on top of the sternum towards the heart. Now relax your arms, let me talk about that. What that is, so you can relax your arms and not keep them in that position. Let me talk about this. When you give yourself a little bit of compression, you are doing a number of things. The fascia, the connective tissue, the fascia, the pericardium covering the heart is connected to the fascia of the inside of the sternum and the fascia of the thoracic spine. So you are stabilizing that fasc those fascial connections, and you're offering a point of resistance as we do the move. So we're stabilizing this also as a point of resistance. It's like if we stabilize our pelvis 
and then turn our rib cage above our pelvis, we're stabilizing the pelvis. Now we're stabilizing here because we're gonna be moving our head and neck. It offers a point of resistance. Um, and it also gives some slack. Can you almost feel when you give yourself a little bit of compression that your head wants to come forward a little bit? Instead of doing a forward head, which messes up this whole thing, we're gonna give ourselves just a little bit of compression, which offers a little bit of slack. Okay, so that prepares you. Now we're gonna actually do the move. It's for increasing range of motion in our sternocleidomastoids and opening up all the neurovascular bundles. And that has everything to do with self-regulation of the autonomic nervous system. Okay, so. Um, we're going to sit well, long neck. We are going to um, hug. We're going to do with the hug. We're going to gently compress, and we're going to side bend. I am. Si we're going to do both sides, so it won't matter. I am side bending, contracting my left, and it's like I have like a little helium balloon lifting the other side. So contraction on my left and length on my right. And now stay in that position and inhale. You're staying with the compression on the chest, gentle. Inhale, feel your chest expand, your rib cage expand. Exhale, stay there for the exhale. Feel the condensing, feel the heart drop. Come back to center, rest your arms and just relax. Oh, where does the time go? Let's do the other side. Hug, side bend. One side contracts and shortens. The other side, like there's a little helium balloon, is lengthening. We're compressed. We're in this position, and we're going to breathe. Both inhale, feel the expansion of the rib cage. Hard to talk and do the movement. And exhale. Feel the dropping of the heart onto the diaphragm and the condensing and come back to center. There's not that many steps. And now we're gonna retest. Sitting nice and straight, long neck. Go ahead and rotate your head and neck to the right and to the left. I got improvement. Now I've been practicing these, so I'm better at doing them. When you're newer at doing things, sometimes you have to do them more than once but it'll all be on the video. I wanna go on and give other moves. Now, I have, I have, actually I have better range of motion now to the left than I do to the right. The left was my harder side. And I'm gonna side bend, another test. I don't feel much change on the right, but I feel a much bigger change on the left. You have to track yourself. So that's all there is to that move. It's a simple move. It's another move to do for sternocleidomastoid. It's the hug, the side bend, and the full breath, the inhale, feeling your rib cage, the exhale, the coming back, giving yourself to center and to rest. And then you'll do it to the other side. That's going to be our move for sternocleidomastoid today. Okay. And oh, it might have helped the jaw even though it wasn't jaw work specifically, it did help my jaw. It may or may not help your jaw. They're so interrelated. I have a little bit more ease. More ease to the right, not so much to the left. And it's okay if you don't feel any change at all. Okay. Let's go to the rib cage. I love this one. So this is all preparation for jaw work. We're, we're helping the balance of our head and neck so that it's easy for us to do jaw work. Now we're gonna do some balancing in our rib cage and that relates to head and neck and into pre preparing for jaw work. Okay, so now, now we are going to, we are going to put our fingers, so our first space is between rib one and rib two. I'm gonna start on my right side. You can start on either side. We're gonna do both sides. I'm gonna put my finger right next to my sternum between the space between rib two and rib three, rib three and rib four, 
rib four and rib five. If you don't get the ribs exactly, you know what? It doesn't really matter that much. I've tried all, I've, I tried various variations and with clients, I saw where they put their fingers and it was like, oh, but they still got good results because we're still relating to the rib cage, to the sternum. So I'm in spaces below two, below three, below rib four, as best I can. I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to um, actually, I want to do a pretest. So that's just in preparation for what we're going to have to do. So bring your arms down. You, you want to do your test and your retest in the same position. Your arms can either hang or they can be on your, on your thighs. I'm just going to let my arms hang. And let's do rotation as our test. You can let your pelvis is going to be stable. And you, you can let your head and neck go along with it, but you're paying attention to the turning of your rib cage. which is your easier side. My easier side right now is my left. Whatever's true is true for you. They could both be difficult, not overdoing it. Okay, and I'm gonna side bend. I'm gonna just side bend to one side. So the intercostal muscles and the obliques on one side are contracting on the other side, they're opening. And I'm gonna to go to the other side. I feel a little bit more tension on my right. You'll feel where you feel it. So those will be our pretests. Okay, so now you're going to um, find your spaces below rib two, three, and four. Press in a little, don't hurt yourself. You're gonna press in a little bit and uh, right next to the sternum. And uh, what you're going to do is um, you're going to tension, you're going to tension yourself. I, I, these are, I've been exploring new movements, so I'm using my notes a little bit more than I often do. Uh, you're going to, this is the, just to the right of my sternum. I'm going to tension myself to the, to the right, but I'm going to turn my rib cage to the left. And I'm gonna breathe, inhale, feel your rib cage expand, exhale, feel it condense. Come back to center, center, relax, check your sitting position. And now we'll do that to the other side. You have to find, here's my first space. So this is rib two, rib two, three, and four. You can approximate it if, if it's a little hard, don't press so deeply that you're hurting yourself. You're going to tension yourself. You're going to, you're going to press in and I'm on my left side. I'm turning to my left for, I'm, I'm tensioning myself to the left, but I'm going to turn to my right. I'm going to breathe in, breathe out, feel the condensing, feel the heart drop. Come back to center. And now I am going to take the, my testing position. I had my arms down and I'm going to keep my pelvis stable. And I got a lot of freedom in my rib cage on that one. You may or may not, but I got a lot of freedom on that for me. Let me do the, let's do the side bending. That's easier for me. Actually, it's easier on both sides. My right really gained a lot. That what my right for side bending was my harder side. That felt really, that felt really good. Uh, let's just check jaw, why not? That helped my jaw a little bit and side to side. I still have more freedom to the left than I do to the right. So whatever's true is true. And I can even just rotate my, uh, rotate my uh, head on my neck. And you know what? I gained a little bit from that as well. So these are very interconnected uh, uh, kinds of um, movements. And also I feel that my eyes have brightened up and opened up a little bit as well. 
Okay, let's actually go into the jaw itself. Whew. Okay, we have a number of moves we wanna do with the jaw. And uh, please remember to move gently, to move slowly, to take care of yourself. Don't go into pain, back off from pain. And um, you have to be careful when you work with the jaw. But the first movement about jaw is most of us retract our jaw when we chew, when we open our mouth. Um, and retraction, there's protraction and retraction. That's when you bring your mandible forward is protraction, retraction is when you bring it back. Most of us, when we open our jaw, retract. But see if you can actually not do that. So what you do, this comes, many books will have this. Um, I, I got this from Theodore Diamond's um, uh, Movement in Action, I think it's called. What you're going to try to do, you're going to use a thought process. You're going to think, you're, you're going to think your chin forward as you slowly open your jaw. And my jaw opened even more and because my habit is to retract. So as you, and I didn't close it with consciousness, but you keep it forward as well. So you're gonna think your chin, just think your chin forward as you both open and close. Stay within your comfort zone. Right there, that is an important movement. It's a movement of habit and we can practice that many times, many times a day. And um, so, so now we're gonna go on to um, our next jaw movement. And um, what we're going to do is uh, some side to side. And let me just look at my notes for a moment. Okay, so it's up to you. We're gonna do both sides. There's a rationale for going to your easy side first and there's a rationale for going to your less easy side. So I'm not gonna deal with that right now. I'm, my, my notes start with the right. So I'm gonna to go to my right so I can follow my notes. And so what you're going to do is we're gonna come back and we're going to, don't, don't press in yet. You're just placing your hands because we are going to compress. So before we compress, we're just gonna place our hands there. Now I'm gonna take my jaw to the right and I'm gonna just slightly open my jaw and take it to the right. Now I'm gonna compress. Now I'm gonna to turn to the right, the same side as my jaw, and I'm going to bring my right ear up. And I'm gonna breathe, inhale, exhale, come back to center. And just sense, I can, I can sense a, a, some uh, connection in there. And now we're gonna do that to the other side. Just place your hands, don't compress yet because your hands can get really tired compressing. And now I'm gonna take my jaw to the left, compress, turn to the left, tip my left ear up, breathe, inhale, expand your rib cage, exhale, feel the condensing, the heart will drop, come back, relax, and now very gently check. I'm gonna check open and side to side. I think it helped my open. Now side to side, I'm gonna to try to just part my lips a little bit like I did the first test. Yeah, it's a little easier. It's easier to my left still, but I did gain some to my right. And side to side movement uses muscles on both sides of the jaw to go both ways. So when I'm going to the right, when my lower jaw is going to the right, I'm using muscles on both sides. When my jaw is going to the left, I'm using muscles on both sides. So we're gonna be doing this side to side. And I'm also going to now just see if the roll down of my neck is any easier from what I've been doing. So I'm gonna drop my chin. Start to bring my head forward, start to roll down.
roll up. And you know what? That's easier. I still have some barrier <clears throat> in my upper cervicals and where the, um, where the bottom of the neck meets the thoracic, but both are a little easier for me. This is so interconnected. And it means we're freeing up nerves. If we get results, we're freeing up nerve conduction, we're freeing up uh, blood vessel conduction, as well as muscular tension and fascial tension. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is reverse the, we're going to, we're gonna do the opposite of what we just did so that we, because side to side is, very, is a very complicated movement. So once again, I'm gonna put my hands in position, but not yet compress. I'm gonna bring my jaw to the right, but I'm gonna to turn to the left and lift my left ear <laughs> and breathe. Expand your chest. Exhale, feel the condensing, your heart will drop. Come back to center and relax. Okay, come in, doesn't matter which hand is on top. And now we're gonna go to the left, but turn to, I'm well, you're gonna, whatever direction you're going, you're gonna turn the opposite way. I'm gonna go to my left. I'm gonna to turn to the right. Lift my right ear, breathe, feel the expansion in the rib cage, feel the condensing. Come back to center. Reorganize your sitting and we're gonna test. I'm actually gonna start with jaw open, even though we were using lateral pterygoids and various pterygoids and other lateral muscle connections or medial pterygoids or one of the pterygoids, it doesn't matter. About the same. Sometimes you lose a little bit with different moves. You have to track which ones are helping you. And now I'm going to go side to side. I'm even going to open my mouth a little bit more and go side to side. I know we didn't do that earlier, but you can have your mouth with your lips completely closed. You can open a little, you can open more, and you can open all the way. There's all these different levels of tests you can do, but those are uh, wonderful jaw movements to do um, for, uh, for the jaw, and, and we're not done yet. So. Um, we're going to be using that temporalis muscle. Let me just do a quick screen share so you know where we are. Uh, all right. We're going to be using this temporalis muscle. So it's, it's right to the side of the head from the temple area all the way around. Let me stop screen share. So it's it's this, it's, it's this whole area and you can make it bigger than it really is. And it has nerve fibers that go very much up and then it starts to fan. It fans and the lowest fibers almost go horizontal. So we're gonna take our three, three fingers and I'm gonna start them right right in this area. You don't have to be extremely precise. And I am going to go through my temporalis, spread my fingers as I bring my fingers up. One, it feels really good. You can do that a few times. We're going to focus more on the more up fibers rather than the horizontal fiber. So it depends how your fingers spread. And that's going to be part of the move. What we're And it's temporalis, works with the masseter or masseter, different people pronounce it. And when we clench our jaws, when we have very clenched jaws and can hardly open our mouth, we have very tight temporalis and masseter muscles. So this is going to help release so we can open our jaw more. So what we're going to do with our head straight forward, I'll try to get my baby finger out of the way. 
as we very slowly open our mouth, we're going to go through, we're going to run our fingers through the uh, temporalis muscle. So you can go ahead and start. And then come back. And I'm going to do it a few times. It feels so good. And I'll do it one more time. And come back. All right, we're gonna do the other side. So you're gonna take this area, you're gonna start right around here. As you open your jaw slowly, you're gonna bring your fingers through the masseter muscles. We're going with the direction of length. I'm gonna do it a second time. And I'm gonna do it a third time. I'm gonna do it three times because it feels so good on me. And come back to center. Okay, so now we're gonna retest. Sit comfortably, long neck, jaw open. That was, that was pretty good. I feel a, a smoothness. Careful of your barriers, don't force. I can easily do the three finger test. I don't think that's important, but because um, I often, when I start, I can only do two fingers, but it's, it's, it's just, it's really, it's really nice. And in fact, let's do it one more time bilaterally. So open slowly. And because of time, uh, you know, you could, you could do it bilaterally instead of one side at a time. I think I even like that better. Um, okay, uh, we are going to do a second temporalis move. Um, and we're going to um, do this one bilaterally. So what's gonna happen is, as we open our mouth and bring our uh, fingers through our temporalis, we're gonna turn, like if I turn to the right, I'm gonna lift my right ear and then we'll repeat it, turning to the left and lift that left ear. So it doesn't matter which one you're starting with. So you're, I'm gonna to go to the right first. So you're doing a bunch of things at one time. You're slowly opening, you're turning and you're lifting the ear on the side you're turning toward. and coming back. And now we're gonna do that to the other side. So I'm gonna to go to the left. I'm gonna to start to open, turn, tilt, and come back. Not so good for the hairdo. And open. Oh, that, that even helped me a little more. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do a roll down. I'm just gonna see what that was like, drop the chin. And that really continued to help, especially those upper cervicals for me in the suboccipital area. And I can go farther down with more comfort. So again, neck, head, jaw, intercostals, rib cage, thoracic spine, it's all related. Okay, those are the moves I'm gonna do for jaw. And so now we are gonna go into the supine position. So it takes some time and um, uh, get yourself set up on the floor, get your chair out of the way. I'm gonna lead this through 
verbally. You'll want support for under your head because when you put the support under your head, not your neck, but your head, it allows your neck to just lengthen with the relaxation. And you're gonna want either support under your knees or bend your knees, feet on the floor because you want to give yourself a position of greatest relaxation and comfort, especially for your spine. And it also helps to lengthen you very much. Your knees are toward the ceiling. They're at a comfortable, they're wherever it's comfortable. Make sure your knee crease feels comfortable and your hip, feel, hip crease feels comfortable. And once you're there, you can feel the support of the back of the head and the upper back and the back of the pelvis your arms in whatever position is comfortable, your hands might be on your midriff, they might be down at your sides, whatever is comfortable. I like mine on my midriff a lot, but I like them in different positions. Feet on the floor, begin to breathe. Let me just review good breathing habits. Uh, you wanna do nostril breathing. You want to extend your exhales you're taking gentle breaths. You don't wanna take big gulping breaths. That actually puts you in sympathetic. That is, that is more of a sympathetic breath. You just want to naturally breathe. When you feel like inhaling, you inhale through your nose. When you feel like exhaling, exhale through your nose. Sometimes I like to open my mouth a little for exhales. That's okay too. Uh, recommended for general good uh, breathing habits are nostril breathing. And to bring yourself into self-regulation of the autonomic nervous system to reset ventral vagal, uh, you want to slow your breathing down and you want to extend your exhales. Some people use counting ratios uh, we're, I'm not going to do that at this time. You can intuit. You take your breath in when you feel like breathing, and then you release even a little slower and a little longer if you can. And you're just going to continue checking in. Is my neck relaxed and long? Is my back long and filled out on the floor? Have I let go of tension in my arms and in my legs. Continue to breathe. And now begin to shift your focus from your mind to your heart. You can even take one or both of your hands and tap over the center of your sternum or just place your hand on your metaphysical heart in the center of your chest. And that where you touch or where you place brings your awareness there. You, you can keep your hand there or not, hand or hands or not. And you are now beginning to take your breath through your heart. Nostril breathing, inhale as if you're inhaling through the heart. Extended exhales through the heart, slowing your breathing as is comfortable, no forcing nostril breathing mostly, longer exhales than inhales. And it gives, it, it takes a little bit of time for the system to adjust and to calm down. And when you do this, and we've already been doing it for a little bit, when you do this for at least three minutes, just this kind of activity, the research shows, this is from the HeartMath Institute, that your cortisol is reduced by 23%. Cortisol is associated with stress. High cortisol, high cortisol levels are high stress levels. This, th uh, this kind of breathing for just three minutes reduces your cortisol by 23%. It increases your DHEA by 100%. That's a, DHEA is a precursor hormone to many chemical reactions inside the body. 
And now we can even add a, a second part to this. In addition to breathing through the heart, with the heart, heartfelt, we are going to add, if you can, and I'll guide you through this, we're going to add a positive emotion. I, I like to start with gratitude because most people can think of things they're thankful for. You might be thankful for your life. You might be thankful for family, friends, partners, pets. Often people can really feel their connection to their pets. Um, giving gratitude for your health, for beauty in the world, maybe a favorite poem or story or movie, um, nature, delicious food. Most people can easily find a delicious food and give heartfelt gratitude for delicious food. And there's so much more. We are resetting ventral vagal. This kind of activity the slowed down nostril breathing, extending the exhales, heart breathing, changes your body chemistry and sends a strong signal from the heart to the brain. This helps bring the heart and brain to come into heart brain coherence. When we are in heart brain coherence, we have access to deep intuition. We have access to levels of clarity and creative thinking and it it deepens it, it has the we have the opportunity to deepen our positive experiences of life and you can add as you give uh, gratitude you can add a very gentle it can be very small a real smile not a fake smile it can be very small um very subtle but as you think of your pet or delicious food or beautiful nature, or whatever it is that you're giving thanks for, add that little bit of smile that also resets the autonomic nervous system, resets ventral vagal. It helps to brighten up your eyes and open up your face. And go ahead just a little bit more. Maybe we'll do one or two more breaths, and then we're going to bring this to a close. And now bring this activity to a close, and we are going to slowly make our way all the way to standing. So I'm going to prepare myself as well. And you won't be able to see all of me, but that's okay. You can see enough of me for these activities. And just because we've been sitting in a chair and doing kind of more upper body work and haven't integrated into full body, we're gonna just start with some gentle full body rotation. Even your feet and legs are moving. Everything is turning in the same direction. You can go, you don't wanna to go too fast, but you don't necessarily have to go too slow. We're just opening up ourselves to full body rotation and getting everything in rotation. Our head and neck is in rotation. Our spine, our cervical spine, our thoracic spine, lumbar spine, pelvis is rotating. Our rib cage is rotating, sternum rib cage is rotating, our somatic center is rotating, we're rotating. Okay, now come to standing and we're gonna stabilize our pelvis. Let your feet be comfortable. I'm gonna bring mine just, a, when I do rotate, full body rotation, they're a little farther apart and I'm gonna keep them a little bit farther apart for this. Now we're gonna stabilize our pelvis and we're gonna rotate from the waist up. So you're gonna include your head, neck, your spine, uh, down to your waist in the back, your rib cage, and you're doing a test. Right now, in the moment, I have more rotation to my left. You'll have more rotation to whatever side you do, or both sides will feel kind of stuck or they'll feel open. So you have to track yourself. 
And what we're going to do, I love this one because it, even though we're gonna, it seems like we're just working with the upper body, this move is also going to free the connections from our rib cage through our somatic center into our pelvis so that when we do our walking, hopefully we are freeing up the pelvis to rotate. It is often the pelvis that hardly rotates on people. Men are a little worse than women overall in rotating the pelvis, but the pelvis can get very stuck. So what we're going to do, we're going to start on one side. I'll come a little closer. And here's, here's my uh, pelvic bones on the side. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab like my oblique tissue, and I'm gonna be aware of where my waist is. I'm gonna be lower rather than higher. And if that's not comfortable, you can take your fingers and you can push back, or you can take your thumb and pull back when it's time to do the movement. Don't tire out your hand. I'm gonna probably grab and be aware that I'm grabbing from the waistline up a little bit. Okay, so now here's the move. You're going to grab that tissue. I'm, go, I'm grabbing the right, and I'm going to turn to my right. And then I'm going to come back. What's happening is you, I'm taking, as I grab this tissue and turn to the right, I'm further contracting the right muscles in the back. So let's do that one more time. So I'm further contracting, giving slack to the muscles in the right lower back area. I can breathe, feel the rib cage expand and come back to center. And now we're gonna do that to the, I'm gonna do it with the other side, the left side. I'm going to find my hip bone because when I press back, I wanna be aware of my waist. And now by turning left, I'm, I'm contracting, condensing, giving more slack to the left lower back area. So now we're gonna do it. I'm grabbing, that's easiest for me right now. I'm turning to the left, further contracting the left low back, breathing, expanding the rib cage, exhale and come back. Because of time, I'm just gonna do it once to that side. Let's do a test, we're not done, but we'll do a test, stabilize the pelvis, and now turn. Oh yeah, that for me, that really made a difference. I'm turning way more in both directions, but wait, there's more. <laughs> now what we're gonna do is push tissue forward. So I, what's easiest for me is to make kind of a soft fist. Here's my waist, I'm aware of that. I'm gonna push this tissue forward, which automatically starts to lengthen. And because I'm pushing the tissue on the right side of my body forward, I'm gonna turn left. And that's further gonna encourage lengthening and broadening in my low back on the, on the right. Okay, did I say left, right? That was. My, when I bring my tissue forward, I'm lengthening the right. Okay. So I'm going to push my tissue forward. I'm going to, my right tissue, I'm going to go to the left. I'm encouraging my right low back to lengthen and widen and broaden even more. Breathe. Inhale, expand, exhale, condense. Come back to center. Let's do that with the other side. You've got choices. And if it's too much, you can go even a little more forward. That's fine too. You can grab, I'm gonna kind of use this soft fist. Here's my waist, I'm aware of my waist. So when I sink in and, and push forward, I'm already lengthening some of my left low back, but now I'm gonna turn to the right, stabilizing my pelvis, turn to the right. And now I'm encouraging length even more on my left. And breathe. Come back to center. Okay. And now stabilize the pelvis and turn. 
I, I, I like this one. I, I think I even got more production when I, uh, when I brought the tissue backward and turned, but you know, you track yourself, it's gonna be different at different times. And now we're going to take a little walk. I'm going a couple minutes over, I think. But what you want to try to feel as you take a walk is if that freed your pelvis to really, you're doing contralateral rotation, but see if you can feel it free up. You don't have to stay in the camera. I'm trying to stay in the camera, but see if you can really feel that pelvis rotate with more freedom, more well-oiled. And you may, it, it's, it's not that the rib cage, we worked a lot with the rib cage. Usually the rib cage is a little easier to work with with people. The pelvis can get more stuck, although that's a generalization, but just see if that freed up the pelvis for you. And that is going to end our class today. I will stay on after. These were pretty much new moves. They were new moves for me that I concocted out of readings and other things I've learned from classes and my imagination. Um, but they're all, they will all be, they'll be in the next newsletter. And Isaiah comes out every Tuesday and um, we'll get it on YouTube and we'll get it on um, um, uh, SoundCloud and it'll go on my next newsletter as well, my website. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. Remember, we are a whole. We are, are always integrating all our systems when we move. When we move muscles, we are moving neurovascular bundles. We are doing so much more than we realize we are doing. And uh, so the message for today is remember to just know that we are a huge coordinated integrated whole and we work best when we think that way. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn off the recording now and we can, anybody can stay and we can have a chat. So recording.